So the story starts a few years ago. We're in central Vietnam at the tail end of the monsoon season. Um, it's one of those gray, dreary, overcast, rainy days, the sort of days where you don't want to go outside. And at the time, I wasn't the most influential filmmaker. Well, in fact, I didn't have any work or any clients. Um, but I did have a video. So that was a little clip from Traffic in Frenetic Ho Chi Minh City, uh, my first video. But let's jump to the present day. So present day, I'm a BAFTA-winning, Emmy-nominated filmmaker. I've worked on projects in over 20 countries, places like Pyongyang, North Korea, to, I don't know, Buenos Aires, Argentina, for a number of the world's leading brands, such as Nike, McDonald's, and Samsung. So, so how did I do that? How did I go from having no work and no clients to winning a BAFTA? So I want to talk to you about the power of the internet, how it's your best friend, how it can turn your passion into a career. But for right now, let's go back to that rainy Saturday in Vietnam where we started. We uploaded the video you just saw, we uploaded it onto Vimeo. Then me and my girlfriend spent the whole day emailing everyone we knew to promote the video. I mean, no family members were spared. The next morning, I logged in to check on the play count and um, well, it might not be the most impressive number, but to me, this was incredible. This was incredible because it meant the 50 or so people we'd emailed had watched it. And more importantly, some people had shared it. By the end of the day, it had received 8,500 plays. By the end of the next day, 100,000 plays. The day after, half a million plays. And within a few more days, one million plays. Again, one million plays. I mean, that's a crazy big number. I mean, I'd heard about this, about videos going viral, but I guess I always thought they must involve like pandas sneezing or like cats falling into fish tanks. This was a video I had made. I mean, this was my passion project. This was me in the jungle in Vietnam in front of a laptop, and I'd uploaded it, and suddenly it was getting the attention of a global audience. And this was all thanks to the internet. So that's the positive. But Uploading videos online actually can be kind of terrifying. I mean, a little bit like standing on a stage and speaking to an audience, only, you know, I, I can see your faces, I can look around, and you guys seem kind of nice, but not like those people on the internet. I mean, on the internet, you get positive comments, but you certainly get some negative comments. I mean, it can, it can feel like you're being judged by anonymous strangers. You get buried with tweets and emails the feedback is relentless. And then there's the play count. I mean, it's like the internet's devised a way to numerically grade your creativity. It's a, a number you can't escape from, and there's no hiding from. So what did I learn these few sleepless days? I think I'd always thought to get a large audience, you needed thousands of followers, or maybe thousands of dollars to promote your video. And, well, I learned I was wrong. I had neither of these. I mean, it turned out my most influential follower for that first video was my grandma. My grandma had watched it on Facebook, or shared it on Facebook, with her bridge club friends. And it was quite a break, that. Thanks, grandma. From there, the internet did its work. I had learned that the internet will curate, that great content finds an audience. So it's really simple. All you have to do is make great videos. Well, that's easy.
Well, it's, it's easy, but sort of. So how do you do that? I mean, how do you make a great video? Um, I mean, I wouldn't presume to know the whole answer, but there are three things that stand out for me. And this is something that Shay touched on, that people have this romantic vision, I think, of creativity and influencing, maybe, that is sort of this, you wake up this wonderful, beautiful, sunny morning with this idea in your head, you scribble it down, and off you go, and it's easy. And maybe it is that way for some people, but for me, it's a process of years and years of work to find your style, to refine it, and then hours and hours to make your work the best it can be before you share it. It's important to make sure you only show your best work. Some pe people's attention spans are short. In particular, the first 10 seconds need to shine. You need to be absolutely brutal in the edit. Only show your best clips and then only show them for a, for a moment. In fact, the better the clip is, the less I often tend to use of it. It's sort of the paradox of the viral video that the person you most want to appeal to is the person who's least interested. Originality is really important. Inevitably, you will build on what's been done before, but don't copy. Find your own style. So my style is flow motion. It's actually a term my dad came up with. I don't know what I'd do without my family. But flow motion is the idea of the single take. So instead of maybe conventional filmmaking, we have lots of jump cuts between different scenes. In flow motion, the camera takes on the role of a character exploring that scene, sort of a seamless way of storytelling. So for example, maybe you'd have a scene with a woman in a hotel room, and you'd cut to a taxi outside. In flow motion, you might move out the hotel room window, look down, and fall into that taxi, that sort of thing. I've got a little example. It's a really short clip. Okay, that's a little clip from Cappadocia, and we'll see a little bit more of it. Well, I hope at the end we might just do that. I don't know. I'll tell you what, I promise you I'll show it, but in about 30 seconds' time. So, should we give that a go? Um, but let's remember where we started this talk. We started this talk back in Vietnam on a rainy day, and I got a million views, like partly thanks to my grandma and her bridge club friends, but I got a million views, and that's a crazy big number. But so what? Like another way of looking at this whole thing is I spent a year of my life and quite a lot of my sanity getting some anonymous people on the internet to watch a little of my work. I mean, was this all worth it? I'd like to say that I was buried in commissions and opportunities and the dollars rained after my first viral video, but not so much. I actually got one single photography commission on the back of that video. I actually went on to make two other city videos, essentially for free, before the commission started to roll, and I learned how to deal with clients. But the next commissions did come, and today I've made 10 viral city videos. 10 videos that have each received in excess of a million views. I get paid to have fun, layers and layers of fun. I mean, I get paid to travel the world and do the work I love. I mean, how awesome is it to get paid to travel it's such a great thing. But it all started with that one video, launched one rainy day in Vietnam. So what have I learned from all this? I guess I've learned it's down to you. If you do something great, then it will get noticed. So what I'd like to do now is play out with the Cappadocia video, if that's OK, just for you. Once upon a time, Cappadocia, Cappadocia. hid in the caves, deep bay, berries, and vizier Ibram Pat, Cappadocian clay, Nevsi. Once, the machine transformed her, and from the heights, did soar. Arms of her. Once upon a time, Antaeus cried out, Father of fleet horse, rivaled stallion, so my king. Brett Alminen. He did create this of clay. In the earth's womb was born. Cray. 
the ground we hid for us. From wars and sun. Beneath history's love of earth. From Once upon a time, this. Incapable.